right, guys, what is up? Coach Cheryl here, and welcome back to Fit Body Secrets, where my goal is to bring you guys inspiration, motivation, education, and a ton of action steps to help you on your fitness journey. And today's episode, I want to talk a lot about this whole concept of like, is eating less making you gain weight or this whole starvation mode thing? And I've talked about this a little bit um, in the past, but I actually want to break down a little bit more detail what metabolic adaptation actually is and why sometimes we focus solely on the food part, uh, perspective of things that there's a lot of other factors that are going on. And oftentimes this is why people have a really hard time, you know, actually staying committed long enough to see the results they want to see, because when we're just addressing one piece of the puzzle, we kind of stall out and it's where people are like, oh, I'm just, you know, never going to be able to change. never going to be able to make these changes. And, and the truth is our body is always changing. And so today's episode, I want to really break down, um, why eating less might actually be making you gain weight and a little bit more about how metabolic adaptation actually works. So, so let's start by talking about what is metabolic adaptation. So essentially what your metabolism is, is think of it like your body's internal barometer. And it's essentially, it's giving your body an idea or a, a message as to where all of the energy that you take in is going to be used throughout your day to hopefully regulate body systems, to make sure that you're feeling good in your workouts, to make sure that you're feeling good in your day, all of these different things to maintain your lean muscle mass. That is what your metabolism does. Now, what happens is when we have an adaptation, it's essentially because the amount of calories we have coming in is off our norm for maintenance, whether it is a calorie surplus or a calorie deficit. So this is where we can get a loss in body weight or a gain in body weight. And if we have a calorie surplus and we have a high volume of training in the realm of strength, our body actually might be getting signals that, Hey, we need to be fueling these muscles. We need to actually be making sure that all of these carbohydrates are going to rebuild and restore muscle function and make sure that we're able to hit those weights harder and also to build and repair those muscle tissues. Now, if we have a calorie surplus and we aren't creating that kind of adaptation, our body then gets a signal. It's like, Hey, we've got extra energy. So we're going to actually store it as energy so we can use it later on. So we're getting into this storage metabolic function here. Now on the vice, when we have a calorie deficit and we have less calories available, our body actually has to become more efficient at the amount of calories. So think of it like you have a tighter budget. You know, when you're watching your money, you're going to be a little bit more cautious of how you're spending things. Your body does the exact same thing with the food that you put in. So when we're in a calorie deficit, things start to slow down a little bit. Our body starts to not utilize energy in, in places that it doesn't really feel necessary, that aren't necessarily necessary for you to actually maintain your life. And that's kind of where you just said necessary like five or six times, but, but that's really what happens is we slow down our metabolism a little bit because it's not that our metabolism is slowing down. It's that the amount of calories that we have isn't as much. So we have to kind of be sparse as to where we use those. Now, people often look at this, like it is just a food related thing. And as I, as I just talked about, I talked about this calorie equation. Like if we have less calories available, our body becomes more efficient as we become uh, as more calories available, our body becomes more efficient. But you also heard me talk about a couple of other things in there, um, in terms of like the amount of training we do and things like that, that are all going to cause metabolic adaptations as to how we use those. Um, but the, the main thing that I want to start by talking about is, is kind of people talk a lot about, and it's where this whole starvation mode thing came from years and years ago that we had realized whoever it was, the dieting world back in the day, you know, when this was becoming a thing is they noticed that people would, you know, be doing the exact same food. And then all of a sudden weight loss would be going down. Then all of a sudden it just plateaus. And then they're like, oh, you're not eating enough. You got to eat more. And, and then what they're trying to do is create this positive adaptation. And this is a really scary part of of the weight loss process. If you have, uh, if you really struggle with understanding that like food is not always going to just turn into body fat. I think that the big thing that people think is if I eat more, I'm going to gain body fat. And that's not always the case. So we can have positive and negative adaptations, um, to the amount of calories we have available and other factors in our life. So, um, so let's just kind of break down what some of the positive adaptations might be. So, and I actually, let me take a step back and I actually want to erase these words, positive and negative as I'm, as I'm saying this, because I don't want you to think that it's always a good thing to require more energy because sometimes, 
you know, like that might mean that we're actually adding more stress on the body and that could negatively impact things. So just, this is where people get into this, like, I've got to keep moving to burn calories. And that could actually sometimes not be a great thing mentally and could actually negatively impact that person. And it's not really negative. If your body becomes more efficient, that's actually your body showing that your metabolism is actually functioning well, that it is actually being smart at how it uses its energy. Think of it like a smart car, right? It's way more energy efficient. It's just not what we want for long-term. And, and this is where I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a scenario to think about. Most people struggle with the concept of they're scared to eat more when they're trying to lose weight. But when they're not trying to lose weight, they're likely eating whatever the hell they want. And the calories are out of control way more than they would normally be eating. And, and this is where, if you guys would recognize that if you can spend some time learning how to eat more in control with the right types of foods in the right balance, those times where you want to eat those foods don't negatively impact your weight because now we've created a positive adaptation. We've got your body utilizing more energy. It's less energy efficient. It's burning more calories. It's going through that fuel. So when you have those higher calorie foods, it's not so detrimental. Your body's not storing it. And I know this is a lot to cover, but that's why I'm going to kind of break things down uh, kind of step-by-step. Step. So the first thing is it's not necessarily positive or negative. It just is an adaptation in one direction or the other. Either we're requiring more energy or we're requiring less energy. Now, food and our movement are two of the biggest indicators of our metabolic needs and our caloric needs. So I do want to make sure that you guys understand that I do know that those things are the most important. However, there are a lot of other lifestyle factors that are going to play into the, um, into effect as to our calorie needs and also why sometimes eating more is actually making things worse. So some other lifestyle factors that are going to affect metabolic function is are things like sleep. So if you are getting really good quality sleep, you are likely burning more calories because while you are sleeping, your body is actually working to repair and to restore and all of those things. If you are under eating and you are also not sleeping well, your body is not doing those processes. So it's those, those processes are not, are blunted in, in fact. So we're not actually getting that calorie expenditure. And we're also not getting the positive adaptation of allowing our body to reset hormone function and all those types of things, which is another thing that plays a factor in your metabolic function. I think people think so much about the hormone imbalance being the cause and, and hormone imbalances are usually a side effect of lifestyle considerations. So we always focus on it's my hormones that are the problem. No, your hormones are the reaction to the problem. And it's, it's hard because a lot of doctors in common day world will be like, Hey, just take this pill and it's going to make things better. No, it's going to fix the pro it's going to fix the symptom. It's not going to fix the problem. And unless you ever fix the problem, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. And I know I'm going down the rabbit hole because this is the stuff that I'm super passionate about teaching you guys. Um, but even things like temperature in your environment are going to play a factor in your metabolic needs and how your body utilizes energy. So if you're sitting in a cold room, your body is actually using energy to make sure that you're staying warm. Vice versa. If you are training in South Florida in the middle of summer, you know, how hard it is to keep your body cool when you're trying to work out in a CrossFit gym, your mood, the amount of, uh, mental stress you put on your body that actually requires energy. Um, it, it causes changes in your cortisol levels and your aldosterone levels and all these different things. Uh, there's just so many other factors, the type of work you do. Are you sitting most of the day in a cold room? Are you outside in the sun? All of those things play a factor into your energy needs. And, and this is why I want to really say that eating less isn't always the right case. And that is the main thing that I want to get out of this. So, so why does eating less end up causing you to gain weight? it doesn't cause you to gain weight. What it does is that when you're not eating enough calories to support your lifestyle, the things that you normally do start to get a little sluggish and, and you're not doing them with the same pep in your step as you used to. So you're requiring less energy at rest. And then what happens, like I said, is those days where you actually want to be able to enjoy a meal and it's maybe double the amount of calories you normally would eat, your body is going, oh man, I've got all this food. And rather than actually burning it up because it's in this con constant state of lower calorie expender, lower calories, it's going to start to store those things. And it's going to try and make adjustments as to how it's using that stored energy throughout the next couple of days, weeks, months, all of that kinds of stuff. So sometimes 
the goal of weight loss actually requires you to look at other areas of your life and also feed your body a little bit more. So now I want to kind of break down a little bit about the different things and how we can kind of get out of this whole calories in and calories out equation, because I think that that is probably the main thing that I know matters most, but I think folk, I think people focus solely on the food and, and that it's just calories and it's not the case. There are a lot of things that are going to factor into how we can really tweak this equation and actually make it less stressful on just, I can't enjoy food. Cause I think when it comes down to it all, the reason why people are not compliant with nutrition is because they're not enjoying the process of eating healthy. They're either hungry all the time. They're bored of their food. They're just not getting what they want. And it's, it's not as fun. Whereas if you actually feel good, you actually like what you eat and you're actually getting enough calories, it's actually a lot easier to comply with. So if you learn to start to fuel your body for your lifestyle and you start to address these other things, you might find that you are actually going to be a lot happier and a lot easier. It, it might be a lot easier for you to sustain the habits that you're creating to lose weight. Because at the end of the day, the goal is not weight loss. The goal is always going to be to maintain a body that you feel proud of. And, and that's not about getting to the goal. It's really not a goal of weight loss. The goal is I want to achieve a different body or a different, a different feeling. I want to feel better. And, and that does require a process of honestly, learning how to fucking eat. It's not about always less is more. It's always about learning how to fuel your body. And surely, like I, I, I will be honest, I get a lot of clients who will come to me and they, they do lose weight, but the ones that are losing weight and they're never getting in enough food, they're always way under are the ones that have the hardest time maintaining it because they're always in diet mentality. They're never learning and trusting their body to like eat enough food. And I could also go down the rabbit hole of why intuitive eating sucks for that purpose, because the person is never going to shut that off. And, and what I teach ends up making a person a lot more intuitive on what they need, but it still does keep a level of structure for that person. So let's talk about some adaptations that we can create, or we can look out for that might be positively or negatively impacting our body composition and also how we feel and how we show up in our daily life, how we show up in our workouts. Cause for some of you guys out there, maybe weight loss, isn't the goal. Maybe you actually just want to be able to get stronger, perform better, and actually look a little bit leaner. So number one, training adaptations, training adaptations are probably the, the number one thing that most people should be looking at. Um, if you have been watching your nutrition and you're kind of in a place of plateauing is that oftentimes we might be kind of stagnant in our training, meaning we go to the gym, uh, and maybe you can relate to the first week of CrossFit, how you were like super sore, uh, everything felt really hard. And then over the next couple of months, even the next couple of years, things got a lot more comfortable. And if you're riding the comfort zone in the gym, you might not actually be getting the positive training adaptations that you need. Training should be putting a stressor on your body. You should be walking a fine line at some point every month of I'm almost at the place of overtrained for your level. It doesn't mean you need to be looking at a CrossFit Games athlete like that's what I should be doing, but there should be a period of time every four to six weeks where you're like this week, I am feeling like I'm walking that fine line of needing some time off. And that is like the week where you're pushing and then you're going to like deload a little bit. And I'm not saying deload in, in the nation. If you're a CrossFitter, it's, I think deload weeks kind of suck for you guys in the CrossFit classes, because maybe your deload week was last week. And so, and so is this this week. It doesn't make any sense, but just knowing that your intensity that week might need to be taken down a little bit, a, a little bit. So you can push it harder than the next week. So we need those training adaptations when we're pushing the limits, our body is going to actually require time to recover from that. And that recovery period is where the positive adaptation happens. That's where our body gets stronger. We build muscle. This is also where people are like, well, I'm not training as hard. Maybe I shouldn't be eating as much. No, like caloric requirements there. Like I said, just like while you sleep, your body needs that fuel to recover and repair and all of those types of things. So with training, make sure that you're training with intent, that you're actually not just walking into the gym and checking the boxes that like your last set is hard, that when you're choosing your weights for your Metcons, that you're actually choosing weights that are challenging to you, that you're getting enough aerobic capacity work in, that you're not just always like going into the gym for the five minute days, that you're actually going in for the 20 to 30 minute days too, that you're getting that variety in. Even in your daily life, if you find that you have 
adapted to the amount of activity you get. Maybe you are adding some walking in and you're doing those types of things just to kind of help, which also, by the way, those kinds of lower intensity activity can actually cause a positive adaptation on your stress levels, which is the next thing that I want to cover is stress. So stress is a part of life and also requires energy. And this is also why people don't understand the amount of calories it requires to deal with stressful situations. Those of you guys that are doing CrossFit and then you're going into a, a freaking nine to five job where you're like on high alert all day and the boss is screaming at you and you've got deadlines and all that stuff. That is a high stress lifestyle and does require energy. Your body requires an adaptation to that as well. Now, if you are also high stress, you're going to keep those hormone, fun- hormone levels up all the time, which causes an adaptation causes water retention, causes other things to change. So there's all these different adaptations that are happening in our body. Dieting is the one that I think that people are most familiar with. And I've already kind of mentioned this is like, as we are cutting back on calories, our body is going to dispense those, those calories a little bit more efficiently and kind of hold things and save them for the most important and the important aspects. And this is where in my client check-ins, I'm always asking like, well, how are your workouts feeling? Are they feeling good? Are they feeling bad? Because with my clients, as they're losing weight, my goal is not to make them feel like shit. My goal is to make them actually feel better in their workouts, to actually keep making positive changes. Because I am addressing things like sleep and stress and all those things. Um, So dieting is also a huge stressor on the body. And not just in a calorie deficit uh, aspect of things too. If you guys are overfeeding the body, if you are overeating calories and macronutrients and overeating sugar and processed foods, You are also going to have adaptations to that. Your body has to also work hard to obviously digest and break down a lot of those foods. And and you're putting a lot of stress in the liver and things like that and and the gut. And there's so many other things that happen that people don't understand that as much as nutrition is what you should be focusing on, what we focus on as nutrition coaches is fixing all of these little things that end up making up the big piece of the puzzle. And then the last one that I put on there is, is hormonal shifts. And, um, and that's really, like I mentioned is that it's not so much that the hormones are always going to be the problem. Sometimes they're the symptom, but sometimes they are a problem and not necessarily a problem, but just part of life. So for women around our cycles, that's not something that we can actually control. It doesn't matter how much we control our stress. We can't get rid of our period. Uh, well, we can, but we shouldn't. So, um, but there are a lot of hormonal shifts as we age and things like that, but we have to also learn to shift with those things and, and learning how to address and adjust Um, changes in our lifestyle, in our nutrition, in our training to uh, support uh, keeping our body in homeostasis. Because at the end of the day, what your, your body is always trying to do is keep all systems running smoothly. That's all it's trying to do is keep your body functioning smoothly. And, and the best analogy I would like to give is like, if you're, if you're putting a pot of water on and you're trying to get to boil, all right. So we're trying to bring that temperature up. That's essentially what your body is trying to do always. It's just trying to get your body to a, a normal, or, or if maybe it's boiling, I should, let me take that back. So let me say it this way. Let's just say you've got this pot of water, you bring it up to a hot boil, and then you turn the, the, turn the water off. What I meant to say is basically what your body is always trying to do is get that water to come back to room temperature. And, and when it comes to metabolic adaptations, that's really what people are talking about when they're thinking of like starvation mode and things like that. And eating less isn't going to fix that. Eating more is sometimes going to fix that, but it comes down to looking at all of these factors. So I also look at like, if a person is eating very little, but they're also moving very little, but oftentimes I have to figure out where do I want to start? Because sometimes the, the goal is actually to get them moving more and eating more, which is actually a better adaptation. It's going to honestly usually help you get better body composition actually help you build some lean muscle mass, actually help you repair some metabolic stress. So there's other things that we can kind of address when it comes down to that. So basically guys, I just work this episode got kind of like off in a couple of different places because what I want you guys to understand is that metabolic adaptations are not necessarily a positive or a negative thing. They're not a good or a bad thing. They just are part of your body trying to be regulated again. And that if you want to have a positive body composition change, or you want to have positive feedback in the gym that you have to look outside of just eating less and moving more or looking at the nutrition aspect of things. And this is also why I think that just saying that I'm going to clean up my diet isn't always the right thing to do because the adaptations might not be happening just from your diet. That is one perspective of things. And oftentimes why a person's diet goes haywire 
isn't always the diet, right? Once again, that is usually the symptom of the problem. Usually it happens after times of periods of vacation, a lot of work stress, a lot of family stress, just chaos in their day-to-day life that causes the diet to go out the window, which is why another diet isn't always the solution. And if you are looking for a better solution to your fitness journey, I definitely want to connect with you. This is why I'm super passionate about teaching things, guys. I want to teach you guys the right way to achieve the body that you want. Uh, So hopefully this episode was helpful. If you guys have any more questions, shoot them my way. I will put the um, link to my call calendar in the show notes for you guys. I always do consultation calls at no charge because I want to learn a little bit more about you before we sign on to any kind of nutrition coaching, because my goal is to make sure that we are a good fit and that I am able to help you with your journey and that you feel comfortable and supported with working with me. So not a plug for coaching, but also a plug for coaching. I hope you guys all have an amazing day, an amazing week, and I will catch you all next week.